I was uh, just ranting to my sister about uh, Rick Steves because uh, I actually do like him, like his uh, podcast, radio show, stuff like that. And I listen to all of his turkey related ones the month leading up to this trip. And he really made it sound like there's just nothing at Troy, that there's just a big wooden horse and there's like no, nothing to really see. But that is not the case. Like there's a lot here, like this ruined city has a long path. I mean, we've been walking around the path for over a half hour at this point. Good morning from the front of my hotel in uh, Chanakala. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. It's the Kudra Hotel. And I very much like this hotel. I mean, just everything about like its design and layout, I really like. The only thing I don't like is the way the shower doors are, but it's a great hotel. And since uh, the drive from Istanbul to really anywhere else south is so long, kind of a, a really good stop off city to like break up your drive. Uh, truthfully, there's not a lot to see around here unless you're really into World War I because they have the battlefield of Gallipoli and the Gallipoli Museum, uh, but we are not going to that. Instead, we're actually backtracking the way we came a little bit and going to Troy. So I guess I'll see you guys at Troy. Well, we have arrived at the ancient city of Troy. They've got this giant replica of the Trojan horse. They don't let you up in there, but it looks like they used to. Now we didn't see it when we were in the uh, city we were staying in back there, but uh, they also had another replica of this horse in the uh, center of the city that was actually from the, the movie uh, Troy and was donated to the city after the, uh, after the movie. These here are all the layers of Troy during the excavations. And right here is where the war was. And then you got the Hellenistic, you got the Roman, and you got us now going to explore the uh, ancient ruins. Although, I'm pretty sure I heard that there ain't much here to actually see. But I could be wrong, so let's head on up in. There's actually more than I, uh, I thought was here. This looks to be the highest viewpoint they give you overlook in the city. There is definitely more here than people make out that there is. Now they don't let you down in to explore through it or anything like that. It's all purely a walking path going up around. My sister's over here reading the board about the, uh, the original uh, archaeologi archaeologist who uh, started digging and discovering here and uh, just how much he destroyed and stole which is kind of a standard thing especially with the uh, archaeologists of that time and older thankfully nowadays things are much more organized and doing everything they can at a slow slow steady pace to preserve everything they find but it really is it does appear to be just just the walls here like there's really nothing else remaining. I gotta assume everything at this point has been stolen and taken to either private residences or a handful of museums. But they are thick walls. We're, we're talking about how uh, rarely we see animals at all in anywhere in Europe when we're going through. And I actually, we are over two weeks in, have seen my first squirrel. And he is much less scared of humans than uh, squirrels back in the States. Look at him up there. Just a rat with a nice fluffy tail. Hey, dude. Oh, ran away. Man, these walls are freaking thick. I mean, if the Trojan War really did happen, which, I mean, they really don't know if it really did happen, at least to the, like, the way that the story is told. But I mean, you can understand why uh, why this was such an impenetrable city. Because I mean, these walls are freaking ridiculous. Especially considering the age of this site. Because most of the stuff we've been seeing over here on the, uh, the western coast is newer. More Roman and uh, like late Roman period. And even into the Byzantine Empire. But this is from 1000, 2000 BCE. So I'm mean, not pushing back as far as Chatahuliak or uh, Gobekli Tepe. I really don't understand what I have been hearing about there just being nothing to see here though. 
I mean, yeah, it's not as impressive as a lot of the sites we've seen previously in Turkey, but that's because we started out east where the sites were even more impressive. But uh, there is a lot here. I mean, there's a lot of the city walls remaining, just nothing within those city walls. Now our guide says that he absolutely loves the Trojan Museum. So hopefully there's a good handful of things we can see there. I'm gonna climb up this set of stairs to get a overlook up here. This is definitely a very different site than what we have seen up to this point. Yeah, we have been seeing ancient cities, but uh, we haven't seen any like, fortified cities. The way that the uh, ones we've been going to have been, I guess you can say fortified, or that they're up on mountaintops, so they're just harder to get to, and that's the way that they protect themselves from invaders. But here, it's it's not up on a mountaintop. It's, it's down in a valley where it's very easy to get to. It's right on the sea, obviously, like most of these old ancient cities were. And uh, because of that, they actually did build it as like a, a fortified city, a fortified castle, somewhat to, similar to what you would see in some of France and Italy and other areas in, uh, in Europe with the thick fortified walls. But I, I just actually can't believe how thick the walls are all throughout the city. It's not just a, it's not just the edge of it. It's, it's every single wall is, I mean, two to three feet thick. Like they definitely built this place to, to hold up. This is all newer construction here that they had built to help preserve the older structure down there, the old bricks down there. So these are all newer clay-fired bricks. But I like how they did it. I like when they don't try it completely to make it look original so you can at least see the difference. I didn't realize some of these structures were as old as they are. The building that this is, these clay bricks are, are protecting was apparently from about 2500 or so BCE. I mean, I knew that this city itself existed to some extent that long ago. So this is pushing around the time of the Great Pyramids of Giza here. Hey, Pop. Hey, Pepper. Do you want the pets? Do you want the pets? I'll the pets you. I'll the pets you. I'll give you all the pets you want. Good girl. You want to catch up to your owner? I just read this board over here behind me, and uh, it's about uh, Schliemann, the uh, original archaeologist, and uh, how he had ordered in a very short time span a trench to be built 17 meters wide and 14 meters deep straight through the center destroying much of what was here just to get down to the bedrock i'm glad that they don't really hide that he did that or try to hide that he did that that is the type of archaeological excavation that would not fly nowadays especially in a country like turkey that does a very good job at uh, preserving things oh this is a this is a cool display. I like how they do this. This is the trench that I was just talking about. As you can see, I mean, it's freaking massive. But he had just destroyed the walls just to get down there. But you can actually see, like, they actually have the layers numbered of the, uh, I guess you could say the generations of Troy. However, by generation, I mean, it's a, a long period of time. I mean, we're not talking, like, 50, 100 years. Or like, I mean, it's hundreds of years between. Going all the way down there to the lower walls. But it is depressing to see the destruction that an archaeologist caused. I understand them wanting to discover and find out things in their lifetime. But with something like this that's buried so deeply under dirt and rubble for so freaking long. I'm going to adjust the camera over here so you can see this behind me. But for something like this that's been uh, just buried for so long and preserved, it's a shame to see us come along and just freaking destroy it to find its riches. The old archaeologists were nothing more than grave robbers. I have been admiring this ramp here behind me for a bit now and uh, wondering like how much restoration did they do? Because they did a good job on it. Like it looks very original. So however they did it, they did good. I was discussing the age of this uh, fortified city with my sister who really should uh, have a degree in freaking history because of the amount of history she has learned and just crammed into her brain. I don't know how she crammed so much up there. 
but uh, I was asking about if there is any other fortified cities that we know of that are uh, this old. But she was saying that, uh, no, this, like, this is probably one of the first signs of a, a true fortified type city, but that the walls weren't originally like 3,000 years ago, or I'm not 3, 3,000 BCE, were not this ridiculously thick. That was a gradual thickening and building up over the uh, the generations of this city. These, every single wall, I mean, is meters, meters thick. It's not just the exterior wall. I mean, every interior wall is ludicrously thick. I was uh, just ranting to my sister about uh, Rick Steves because uh, I actually do like him, like his uh, podcast, radio show, stuff like that. And I listened to all of his turkey related ones the month leading up to this trip. And he really made it sound like there's just nothing at Troy, that there's just a big wooden horse and there's like no, nothing to really see. But that is not the case. Like there's a lot here. Like this ruined city has a long path. I mean, we've been walking around the path for over a half hour at this point. But I mean, there's a freaking little theater or council hall, whatever, what is this? That actually doesn't even say. There's, there's a lot here. So I know he is big on the traveling to get into the culture and the people more than like the ancient history, ancient sites. But don't listen to him when it comes to the ancient sites because Troy is definitely worth a visit. We always get so freaking lucky with rain. Even though we're all atheists, we joke that we are rain gods or the, the weather gods look out for us because it legitimately never rains when we are doing the things we really want to do or go and see. Uh, even if it is supposed to rain, like a 90% certainty that it's gonna rain, it just doesn't. It will while we're going there and when we're leaving, but it just doesn't while we're walking around. And that's the case right now. It sprinkled on our way up, but then as soon as we got out of the van, it was stopping. And now we're about to leave again and it's starting to sprinkle again. Perfect freaking timing weather. These good pup dogs. This one's like rubbing my belly. Rubbing my belly. Rubbing my belly. <laughs> we have now arrived at the Troy Museum, or the Museum of Troy. It is this big, perfectly square, red-brown building up here. So let's head on inside. Oh, look at the little pup dogs. There's so many pup dogs here. Oh, there's even a pup dog out in the grass out there. So many, so many puppy dogs. But we're, we're heading on in. I'll see you guys inside. There is apparently a school class trip here at the Troy Museum. We get to go to museums with a tiny bit of ancient history. They come to museums with uh, 5,000 years of ancient history. That is one of uh, the prime reasons traveling uh, America just doesn't interest us. Like traveling in uh, Europe and other parts of the world. Our history is just too young. I feel like the uh, National Mall Museum in the, the US and DC should do something like this because they have so much uh, stuff that's uh, buried. Yeah, that's that's how you have to. Because <laughs> they have so much stuff that's uh, down in like their cellar, basement, storage area. That's just not uh, accessible or viewable to the public because they have just so much of it. And like pottery shards are one example. Like, there's just so many pottery shards. And that's one of the reasons I get kind of bored with the pottery at museums. But that is a cool way of displaying it. I like that. These clay figures here are fantastic. Usually you see really crappy representations of humans. Like these are actually well detailed. Like they look like humans, not just blobs. And like the deer, like that's a that's a gorgeous little deer. Oh, look at this vessel down here. I think this might be one of my favorite sarcophagus scenes I've ever seen. Like from the deer to the dog tackling the boar while he's spearing it. Like this is this is an absolutely gorgeous sarcophagus. The backside is a plane, so it's definitely a 
made to be viewed from one angle sarcophagus. We are only in the first little tiny room of this museum and I am pretty darn impressed with it. And there are a lot of little kids here for school. But it's kind of nice because like they actually seem to be appreciating some of the pieces. And then I remember I was not like that, nor was like anybody in school with me when we had went to uh, museums. The European children definitely view museums differently than us Americans. that they put fallow deer there but then they use the wrong type of deer as the picture that's a red deer but the carving on the sarcophagus downstairs was definitely a fallow deer with the uh, fan antlers the second floor seems to be a uh, largely pottery or pretty much all pottery so it is not as impressive as the first floor is oh la la children This seems like a dangerous display when you have uh, 50 children coming into this room. Oh, that's a cool. I know. With those augmented reality dioramas, I have never seen something like that, and I freaking love it. Like that's uh, that's the kind of thing I'm hoping that in the future we start to uh, see larger scale versions of at the actual sites once. Uh, once that becomes a better uh, technology, a more improved technology. I think we're heading up to the next floor now. But yeah, this, uh, this second floor is mostly seem to be uh, pottery related things other than those little dioramas. We have reached the third floor and it definitely looks more impressive than that second floor was. It actually has uh, the statues from it seems like around the Roman period. I am absolutely loving the, uh, the hunting scenes that they have uh, carved on the stones and the sarcophagi and stuff here at this museum. There are some of my favorite hunting scenes I have seen. The museum as a whole isn't standing out to me as one of my favorites, but uh, it does have a few pieces that really catch the eye. Oh, I like the face on that one. And we are staying just ahead of the children and uh, heading up to the uh, last floor here at this museum, which does seem like a smaller floor than all of the rest, but hopefully they got some good things up there. I will say the museum is very nicely like laid out and there's tons of information like more information than you see at a lot of museums as far as like the boards giving you details about the history and things however there's not as much stuff to actually see here and a large part of that is sadly because of Schliemann the uh, first archaeologist and all the crap he stole and has still not made its way back here to Turkey but if or when it does I'm sure they'll be able to uh, really fill in this museum nicely the space that's open another one of them uh, displays of all the broken pottery though lots and lots and lots of pottery shards in them and a typewriter why is there a typewriter? I don't know that person. And right after I just said my uh, spiel about uh, them getting their stuff back here and filling in the uh, empty space of this museum, I see this on the wall. Trojan artifacts longing to be reunited, reunited at home. And then they have this display here, which you can look in to these holes and see little pieces of uh, some of the treasures that uh, Schliemann had stolen and are still being held in other various museums around the world or private collections and people aren't bringing them back to Turkey. We have uh, reached the end of the museum and I will say it's not one of my favorite museums. It's, a, it's definitely a knowledge museum with all of the, uh, the information that they have. They seem to have a lot more placards of information. So it does make it a good class trip museum as uh, you can tell with all of these uh, little children down here. 
So it is a very beautifully built and put together museum. And it is worth a stop if you're going to Troy. But not one of my favorites. So we're heading on to lunch now because my stomach is a grumbling. So see you guys there, but like usual, probably won't show you me eating. In all of our travels all around the world, this is the first time we have ever actually driven on to a ferry. We almost did it in Greece, but we didn't end up renting a car like we, were, we had talked about doing. Uh, so we did take ferries, but we didn't, uh, didn't do the whole drive on thing. So new experiences. We're heading on up here to uh, chill out up on the deck. We're here for about 20 minutes as we ride across this channel over to the other side and continue on to Istanbul. idea what it is maybe I'll look it up and I can put it put it down in the down here and let you guys know what it is but we are hanging around here I think we're heading on to lunch next we have arrived in whatever this uh, city is to uh, have some lunch and I'll uh, let you guys know how it is this is the place we're eating there. Oh, look at all the food. I would say that this is one of my favorite meals that we have had in Turkey. Um, I'm not really sure what it was. Like, uh, I think it was like an Iskand or kebab. Uh, it's like a tomato sauce and uh, the bread underneath that just like soaks it all up. And uh, if you're passing through uh, like the Gallipoli area in Chinacola, then I, uh, I'd say that this is a good stop. And I like the little area out here. It's very, uh, very nice and pedestrian like. Uh, I don't know if there's any traffic at all. I think it's all just people are walking and a big fluffy dog. So I'm gonna finish my tea and then uh, we're gonna hit the road and head into. Uh, is mine? Yep. Thank you. Uh, heading to uh, Istanbul for the next four nights. So see you guys in Istanbul. Well, I have gotten into my tiny little pink room. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. I can, I can deal with pink, I don't really care. For, especially for how little I'm gonna be in here. How's the view? I ain't got no view at all. Um, so, furthering my statement, from the very first video. If I did say it, I'm not quite sure. I'm not going to highly recommend this hotel. It is very expensive for Istanbul. It is starting at over 200 euros for a room like this. And like this kind of room, fine for well under 100 euros. Um, not for that kind of money. The only reason you're paying that much here is because of the location. And I do gotta give it that. The location is very good. It is like smack dab in the middle of like the Blue Mosque on one end, the Hagia Sophia on the other, both of which we don't really care about. But there's a, I mean, obviously it's the old historic district. So there's other things that we do care about there that we are gonna go see. So it is what it is. This is our hotel. It's what the tour booked us. And uh, we're staying here for the next uh, four days. So uh, I think we're gonna possibly go out and wander around a little bit. I really don't know the plans. If we do, I'll take you guys along. Uh, and if we don't, this is the end of the episode. And if you guys have watched all the way and you haven't already, hit the like button down below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. The bathroom is almost as big as the bedroom. No. Oh man, I was hoping you would try longer so I could keep recording you try.
It said a corner store. <laughs> What did you think I said? <laughs> we don't know why we're laughing. I'm laughing at her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she broke her side. It's not going to be. What the fuck? How much alcohol did they put in there? It's a fucking Long Island. That's the whole thing. It only takes one. <laughs> Okay, mom, come on. <laughs> Normally, it takes either my sister or me to break my it's mom, but she family. broke herself it's on that one. Hi. Good kitty. Good kitty. Good kitty. Mm. 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 Touch mom. 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 It did nothing. It did not to function. Touch again. Touch again. <laughs> there, we re reenacted it. You can add that in post production. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna add the special effects in there. Good morning from my hotel here. What the fuck is the name of the city? 